Hey, welcome D Lab, everybody. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the filter cap in this beautiful Heathkit model IG72 audio generator. But there is a slight problem. Let me show you what that is and give you the solution. Okay, here's the chassis of this IG72 audio generator. It is in beautiful condition. It's already been partially refurbished, but the thing that the guy didn't do is change out the filter cap. So this is a dual 40 microfarad cap at 450 volts. So here's the problem. This capacitor retails between $45 to $50 for the reproduction can capacitors. You can buy these audio generators for about the same amount of money. So you're going to end up with the same cost of the generator just to change the filter cap. So what is the solution? These Unicap kits made by W8AOR. Scott sells these little universal kits that you can configure to replace that filter cap. And here is the one that I built up. So there is a pair of 47 microfarad caps at 450 and they will bolt right in the place of that filter cap, hook up your leads, and you're off running for about $10. There, here's the bottom side of the generator. Luckily, the wiring is easily accessible with the bottom of the old filter cap. So I have configured the base of the new universal cap to agree directly with this pinout. So replacement should be a breeze. All right, there's a new cap installed. Took me about 15 minutes. We'll check our grounds. It's good. And here are my two hots, which we don't want to see shorted to ground. All right, let's fire it up and test it. All right, here we go. We're going to apply power after replacement of the filter cap. Strange thing is, these are new caps, never been powered up, and I already have 1.5 volts sitting on them. So they must have picked that up somewhere else in the generator. All right, I'm going to power it up. Watch your voltage. It should shoot up around 400 volts. Once the old rectifier tube comes up, and there it is. And I can hear the generator singing. Just putting out a signal. All right, next, let's hook it up to a scope, look at the output. And then the other thing I notice is that this generator does not have a built-in fuse. So we're going to go ahead and install one of those before I reassemble it. Now I'm going to fire up the generator. Now we can watch its output on the oscilloscope. And there she is. A little jump there when you select the different frequencies because this actually has switching instead of a variable capacitor. And here is the amplitude. She's nice and clean. What a beautiful audio generator. Heathkit sure made some nice stuff. So that completes the replacement of the old filter capacitor. Next, I'll get in there, install my fuse, and put this guy back into service. Okay, for your reference, this is the location that I picked for the AC fuse. So this is where the ground lug used to be for the filter cap. I had to drill an additional hole, swing that lug over there, and I used the old hole to mount the fuse holder. And it's in line with the AC power switch. Good to go. So here's a quick example how the switching works on this audio generator versus a variable capacitor like you'd see on a normal generator. I'm at multiplier 1. Cycles is 60. You can see we have 60 on the counter. Now I'm going to take my multiplier Go times 10. You see we're just under 600 hertz, and you can make that up with the cycle switch. You can dial that in to get your output calibrated. Remember, there are no physical calibration adjustments in this generator. It's all done with precision resistors. So here is times 100. See, we're a little over 6K. Now if I were to adjust my cycles down, so we can't quite hit 6K exactly. And here is times 1000. Same thing. 
We're slightly over 60K and slightly under. So that is the purpose of the cycle switch. That is to kind of fine tune in your frequency. But for amplifier testing, it doesn't matter if you're off a hertz, right? You're using this as a signal source. Well, there is the new W8 AOR filter cap assembly installed. Sure looks a lot nicer than that old monster and much less expensive. You can find Scott's information online or he actually sells these little kits on eBay. Check him out.